Protesters set to heat the streets again uh, to demand a better governance today. We'll bring you live updates and also dissect the anatomy of protest. Clamor for restructuring continues. What kind of restructuring do Nigerians want? And what is true for Drabazin? We'll talk about all that much later. And also, uh, Mikhail Obi meets with uh, the Kogi State Governor, Yahya Bello, and promises to support whatever future political position he wants to go into. Very good morning to you and thank you for joining us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're hoping that you had a swell weekend. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Aneta. Good morning, Asarge. Good morning. It's the 14th of, uh, Jan of June, 2021. Going back to January, briefly. Yeah. Funny enough, I was even going to say May. I was like, no, we just, <laughs> <laughs> we just crossed that bridge. And it's a, it's a public holiday also. Yes, so there's going to be a lot of people sitting at home to, uh, this morning. Uh, we hope that you can make the best of it. I saw a little accident, actually two accidents um, around phase one yesterday. One of them wow. on Freedom Way, another one uh, just on the way to the toll gate. I'm not sure what, you know, why, you know, people were out late last night, you know, maybe intoxicated or driving that rough. But we hope that you, you know, get better soon, whoever, you know, the you know, victims are. Good morning once again. There's so much that we will be talking about today. Yes, uh, we know that over the weekend there was the whole protest because of the June 12th Democracy Day. So we're we'll talking about that in detail later on on the show. Um, talks of federalism as well. But really for our top trending, uh, we're still talking about politics, but how politicians are drawing in influencers across multi-sectors, you know, to just plead their cause for their political ambition. We know how politicians use the influence of musicians who pull massive crowds by the million to say, vote for me or vote right. Um, we know that Two-Face has been one of the prominent voices campaigning for, you know, if free election, fair elections as well. And um, footballers are not exempted from this. Um, over the weekend, Mikel Obi visited Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State uh, at the government house, and he's made promises to support Yahya Bello in whatever future uh, ambition or whatever future political position he wants to go into. You know, now, nobody's talking about money. If he received any money for that, we can see pictures of, of Mikel Obi there shaking hands with Yahya Bello. Um, but we do know that um, Obi saying he would like to be there to support Yahya Bello, be by his side through this journey, and help him achieve whatever he wants, which is for the betterment of Nigeria. And we know that there are talks about Yahya Bello contesting in the 2023 presidential elections. There are lots of groups who have come together, according to you, like to say, two, three, seven people come together to say, we stand for Yahya Bello. But you know, we know, we know how, it, how it works in Nigeria. So there's been clamors, allegedly, supposedly, um, for Yahya Bello to run for president in 2023. So the questions that are being raised is, is this another case of footballers just blindly supporting politicians is this for money is this just to use your influence to say let Nigerians vote right this time you know so there's just lots of questions for this is this about whoever pays the highest endorsement fee or just love for the motherland oh well um, I think you know we even on a public holiday on a Monday halfway through the year should never you know forget what is uh, most important and that is um, the fact that Nigeria needs something different, Nigeria needs a change, Nigeria needs, uh, you know, fresher minds, Nigeria needs, um, a, you know, a totally, you know, breath of fresh air, you know, with regards to whoever runs uh, for the presidency and, of course, even in the state level and on the local um, government level. Um, so that's, you know, very, very important. You know, there is never going to be a lack of people trooping into, you know, one government house or the other to pledge support you know and i don't I, I personally don't think that these things should be allowed to be distractions from what exactly the goal is we as nigerians and i believe that the whole of the electorate already know who you know you know might be a, a good candidate for that position um we would some people would support you know based on um financial uh, gain some people would support based on tribes some people still support based on religion and some of all of that but in, in the deepest part of you, you would still know whether you are supporting the, the right candidates that will make your country better or not. Um, I tweeted something yesterday, um, or I posted something on, uh, I think it was on my Instagram story, that um, whatever it is that you collect from a candidate uh, for 
whatever you know level of support that you can give would only last a week or two weeks um no matter how much it is you know maybe two weeks maybe a month maybe five months but the disaster that that candidate can cause to the lives of millions of nigerians would last for four years and maybe also eight years and so when we are you know doing the things that we're doing today when you know whoever it is decides to go to any government house to go to any politician to claim support um, the president should be reminded that whatever it is you know that you do to to allow the wrong candidate get into that position would cost and of course you know would affect the lives of millions of people for four or eight years there is never going to be a lack of groups going to pledge support to a candidate that they know has no chance or they know you know would never you know be a good candidate um, there would always be that, even on the state level. Um, um, Mikel Obi, ha of course, is within his rights to go to whichever government house or not. And of course, you know, uh, rumors would have it. Biapalo discussions would always say that, oh, you know, once you enter a government house, you're not coming out empty handed. There's always going to be one thing or the other. We would expect that Mikel Obi is rich enough to not be doing, you know, stuff like that. And so um, maybe, you know, it's not about money. Maybe he truly sees the Haya Bilo as, you know, someone. Uh, who should go for presidency or who should, you know, you know, run for a higher position than governor. That's, it's within his rights to do that. But I feel some of all these things should just be ignored. Um, no matter how many people go there and come out, no matter how many people troop in there to, you know, claim, you know, support, I think we, as Nigerians and the electorate already, should have a very, very faint idea of the people who should get to that position yes. and people who shouldn't. And, and, also and I don't think, I personally don't think that, you know, people should let themselves get robbed in the mud uh, politically, mm -hmm. you know, because of that little financial gain that they could get. And I'm not saying that that's what Mikhail has done, but we, of course, you just mentioned Two-Face, you know, and what he's been saying. But in the past, there's been other artists who have been, you know, called out because they supported one government or the other. And this is a disaster that, you know, that government brought yes. in, you know. So how much did they pay you to, you know, write this campaign song? How much did they pay you to be a part of this youth campaign when you knew that this thing was not going to be good? So you collected so, so and so amount of money or whatever it is. Um, and this is where we are today. So it's going to be bad if eventually um, in the future... Yeah, Yabelo gets there and doesn't do well. Mikel will always have his name in the mud as being one of those people who went in there. But there's yes, never going to be... Another question really is how much weight can Mikel pull None, in to be politics? honest. None. You you know, know, and that's why I said asking, some, some really. of all these things, you know, it's fine that we ignore some of all these things. You know, Mikel can't convince five people. Um, in his local government to vote for anybody. You know, he, he doesn't have that level of political re re relevance, not even in, in the football world. You know, you cannot, you know, transform the, the presence that you had as a Chelsea player, as a Nigerian soccer player, to convince anyone to vote for anybody. In the Nigeria that we are today, to vote for anybody that Nigerians do not see as a good candidate. The only way is if there is some financial gain, which is sickening, but he, he, it's, it's stuff that we should ignore. So, so these politicians need to actually show they're working if they want the votes of the, of the people. Absolutely. Not give money to uh, influencers or invite them to the state house for, for presidential handshakes. He, he may not have invited him. He may have just, you know, visited him, you know, as a, as a friend. Or Possibly. As, the, as, you know, someone who was Possibly. in Kogi State that, you know, that weekend and thought, well, let me stop by and see the governor. It could be anything. Meanwhile, um, uh, what's his name again? Kamaru Usman, uh, ultimate fighting champion, welterweight champion, um, um, Ultimates Fighting Championship Waterway yes. Champion yeah. also visited um, Yahya Bello on his, you know, when he, he came to Nigeria. And this was this was about three days, three days. Three yeah, days he, he's been around. I think he's having a you know a little tour. They're having an event. Um, I saw um, Charles Okwaleke put something like that. They're having an event in Nigeria. So he's been in Nigeria. He also visited the Lagos State Governor um, and took pictures with him. You know, but I don't think that has you know a lot to do with politics. That's just being in the country and being But Michael will be statements. Yeah. You know, clearly made made it you know obvious yeah. that he was going to support Yahya Bello in whatever political. This this is quoting him now that he's going to support Yahya Bello in whatever political position yeah, he's it's, running it's, for. It's all just mouth. Uh, um, I think, you know, I've said it before that any five, six people can form, you know, any a group and call it a coalition of Michael Youth Coalition, <laughs> you know, and go to a government house and form support and get something out of it. I've seen these things happen, you know, and it's very, very true. Um, eight out of ten times that any group or a person, you know, of some tiny relevance walks into a government house to pay a visit or to go say hi and, you know, say, oh, I support you. You're such a great governor. Even if you know that the governor is trash, um, now, you would always come out with something. Still talking about, you know, 
you know, uh, politics and support, so to speak. Did you see the video over the weekend um, during the June 12 protest and there was a counter protest, the I Stand with Buhari group, yes. and then the video that went viral with the lady saying they just gave them shirts and asked them to come stand here. Yeah. We're going to give them 1,000 naira. Yeah, absolutely. Did you see I that video? That. 1,000 naira. Did you see that and, video? And, you know, and most of the comments there have been to point out, you know, how you weaponize poverty. Um, how you, you know, you, you well can put. convince, you know, 100 people, you can convince 1,000 people, you know, with 1 million naira, you know, share 1,000 1, 1, naira. There's poverty in Nigeria. And that level of poverty stops people from thinking, you know, they want to eat today. They don't care about what the next four years will bring. They don't care about what the next three months will bring. Today, they need to eat. And even if it's just one such, you know, one pack of, of uh, noodles, they will take it and, and stand in line with you. They don't care what your, your views are, what your political stance is. They don't even care where you're coming from. The devil can bribe anybody that is poor enough with 1,000 naira to support him. Hitler would have gotten followers, would have gotten, you know, a huge fan base if he had 1,000 naira to share to, you know, people who are really, really poor and need that money. And they, to, to be, those people who are in, His in those crowds... His propaganda was enough. Yeah, those people who are in those crowds um, absolutely aren't there because they know what your message is. If you notice some of all those pictures, sometimes the whole placards, the placards are upside down. They don't know why they are there, you know. But if you They're give them five hundred naira, yeah, They're give them a thousand naira or five hundred naira, you would gather as many people as possible. There was a ten million man match for Abacha in yes. this same Nigeria, yes. so not, nothing would yes. you know shock me. Okay, so next up, trending. Um, this just goes to show the power of publicity no matter how negative or po positive it is. Yep. And it's because of a popular Yoruba, well, not necessarily popular, she's gaining uh, or getting into the limelight now, but her name is Adeyinka Ale Alashiori. Apologies if I butcher that. But she just released a song called Oniduromi. And she released a song, it's a gospel song. I, I listened to it, and in the song, she's basically eulogizing God and calling him names and saying, this is what you are to me, you're my guarantor. If a, if a man would stand as a guarantor for me, he can always bail out, he can always disappoint me, but you stand by me through thick and thin, just praising God in the yeah. song. And popular Yoruba Nigerian singer, Tope Alabu, Tope Alabi, shaded Adeyinka over the song, saying she tried to sing the song many times, but the Holy Spirit cautioned her against singing the song, saying that God is more than a guarantor to her. Now, when she put this video out, you know the way she has so much influence on Kualabi, she has a massive following, massive audience. So she put that video on her own social and people began to show support for Alashe Yori and criticize Alabi for her song because obviously they had to go listen to this song that Tokwe Alabi was criticizing. So they say, wow, the song is actually great. We love the song. And they even started to do an Oniduro challenge. And they weren't playing other songs from this um, Yoruba gospel singer, Ade Inka. So she wasn't much known before Alabi's Shade, yeah. but now she's been thrust into the limelight. And people have been commenting, you know, just criticizing Tope Alabi for her words, saying, you know, even in the Bible, they say, come, let's reason together. You could have done this privately. You could have called Ade Inka if you felt you had things to say to her. You didn't have to do that in public, embarrassing her, but now it's been turned around for her good. You know, people there quoting the Bible, talking about how, people thought this was going to ridicule, ridicule people or something that was planned for you. God is not turning it around for your yeah. good. So um, it's now giving Tope Alabi a bad rep and positive publicity, lots of public, positive publicity for Ade Inka because personally, I never knew of this artist, but I've streamed her song even this morning. You know, So that's basically where it stands right now on the Dura Challenge on social media and lots of backlash for Tope Alabi. Well, I've, I've known her. Uh, for a bit, the, I and I have actually listened to the song a million times. Um, um, it's not it's not so new, except it's a totally different song. But there's um, a song that she has about nine or twelve minutes long. It's probably the same song um, that I have um, well done my morning devotion uh, with many, 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 many times. Yeah, it's about fourteen I'm trying minutes. To find it. Yeah, that's seconds, that's that's yeah. The, that's the song. So it's not a new song. It's called uh, Arojinle. Arojinle. Yeah. In, in, in yes. In brackets, it's called Arujili. It's on, yes. it's on, um, you know, um, Apple Music. So it's a, it's a song that I've I've had from you know close to a year or even more. Um, and I even uh, when I don't understand Yoruba, um, I can still feel what the song is saying. 
Um, so I'm not sure where Tokpelabi is coming from, you know, and I try to follow the story, but because I don't understand Yoruba well enough, I, I wasn't sure what her challenge was with, um, with it, you know, but like you said, you know, from criticism, you know, you might eventually become more popular than you were initially. Um, I've also seen conversations concerning, you know, how Christians should behave. I've seen people post videos of um, Tokpelabi when she, of course, was dancing to secular uh, music and, so, and some, some of all of that um, um, and stuff. So... She was wrong, obviously. You know, like you said, she could have called her, you know, personally and, you know, had this discussion. Um, but I still don't even feel it's any of her business because nobody is criticizing uh, Tokwela exactly. for the kind of songs or the, exactly. what her lyrics are saying. It's none of your business. You know, put, put out your own music. You've been popular because of your music for, for many, many years. You've been a, a mega super, um, Christian or uh, gospel artist for many, many years. And nobody has called you out to say, oh, we don't understand this particular lyrics or your lyrics don't really sound really, really good. So do your thing, all right? And leave Adi Inka to do her thing. Yeah. Let, her, let her worship God. And it's, it's, it's one of the things that I've always found difficult with Nigerians, trying to teach you how to worship. Exactly. Worship is personal. She was praising her God. So I don't um, know why, even if, you, even if the Holy Spirit criticized you for doing that, that, that's your own personal criticism. Maybe you have erred in a certain space yeah. and God is telling you, maybe based on whatever it is, I don't know, just, just conjecture, right? So why do you have to come out and put that out there? I don't know. We're, well, the great thing is, it's now been turned into Adeninka's favor. Yeah. And if you say the song has been out for over a year, maybe God said, this song isn't getting as much traction as it should. Who, which person has enough rep on social that can drive all the, all the engagement? It's been out for a bit. I'm not, so, I can't, I can't so, remember who it was or which platform that I heard it on. You know, and then I, it, it sounded really good. And so I had to go search for the lyrics. That thing you type the lyrics on Google, you know, and then it refers yeah. you to the song. And I, I got I got it on. Um, and if you, music. if you listen to and the song, you can song. feel how genuine it is because it's not it's not spurring you to dance. It's just worship. Yeah. So Absolutely. anyway, um, but Nigerians will always like to teach you how to worship, you know, in your own way, you know, and always be judgmental in their own way on how to how to how to praise God, you know, mm. the God that everyone should have a personal relationship with. God means yeah. different things to different people. Yeah, so what? are you jumping on the challenge, so, by the way? No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I sing the song myself. You know, I don't understand your but it's a song. Like I said, I've I've played it so many, 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 many times. It's it's a long song, mm -hmm. and so there's a time I used to do like a one hour worship um, in, in the mornings or Amen. at night <laughs> before, of course, we, we got really, really busy with work. And so it was one song that used to help me pull through that one hour. Guys, tell myself I must do one hour. So when I play that song, I know I've done 14 minutes. Let's go again. <laughs> You're trying to scam before God, you know, eh? if I play two times, I know I'm doing good 30, <laughs> 30 minutes. minutes. Let's go. <laughs> Before you know, one hour is done. I'm oh like, my. yeah, praise Jesus. All right, praise God this morning. Uh, we'll take a break here and uh, return uh, with what, more worship or? <laughs> We're getting into um, off the press. You know, what major stories are making the headlines this morning? We'll share with you. Stay with us.